Um, obviously excited about a win. I think any time that you win at this level, uh, you win on the road. Uh, you win against an ACC team that, that obviously spends significantly more money than, than we do in relation to uh, – you know, being a good team, uh, it, it's a good win. Now, um, obviously, I'm not necessarily happy with the way that we played. And I think that's, uh, you know, to, to um, kind of get to that point to where, uh, again, you're not uh, necessarily happy with a win over an ACC program, uh, that's, uh, that's probably saying something. And so I'm probably excited about that also. I think that uh, we knew that it was going to be a defensive game. Uh, I mentioned it last week, and we knew that we were going to have to be a little bit more ball control oriented, that we were going to have to take some time off the clock because of the option or uh, oriented offense that Wake Forest ran. And their defense is, uh, I think, a pretty good defensive football team. Their offense had been struggling, and so we knew we were going to have to play a field position game with them. And if you look at the statistics, I think we uh, we got that accomplished. Very pleased with the defense in relation to stopping the run. We knew going in that was something we were going to have to do. They abandoned the option very early, whether that by be by the nature of our defensive structure or if they're in, the, in maybe the midst of a change. Uh, that'll be interesting. We didn't get very much of the things that we'd prepared for all week from an option standpoint, and they started kind of throwing the ball around on us a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned afterwards, I reiterate it now in the sense that, you know, uh, we're not necessarily a zone coverage team. We've got to get better at it, but in order to defend the option, it makes an awful lot of sense to be in a little bit more zone, uh, zone-oriented uh, defensive structure. And in the process, uh, we gave up um, some plays. Uh, I think, especially in the two-minute drive, I was not happy with the defense. Obviously, as I mentioned afterwards, and in, in terms of kind of what happened there, uh, from an offensive standpoint, uh, you know they played us. Uh, with a drop eight type of scheme in the sense that <coughs> there's the first one. Um, <coughs> they, tried, they played us in a drop eight type of scheme to where they were just rushing three players. I think their nose guard is really, really good player. He required that <coughs> that we uh, triple team him quite a bit. Excuse me. <coughs> My voice. <laughs> that would. Um, <laughs> that's not like Gary Patterson. <laughs> that's not like Gary Been battling this thing here for a few days. <laughs> so, are you questionable for Saturday? <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> it put our tackles in a situation where they were one on one, and they they got some pressure with the, with their uh, defensive ends. <laughs> It forced us to have to go to the flats quite a bit. And to our offense's credit, and we were not in a hurry-up style of offense most of the game, <coughs> that um, uh, that led to the 104 plays and obviously a, a significant amount of time of possession. So overall, um, we got some things done. <coughs> we know what we need to work on and obviously excited about this week in relation to playing a, you know, a very prolific uh, Baylor team that's that's on a roll, um, seven and one I think here lately, and haven't missed a beat on offense and their defense has improved. So great challenge for us, and we're anxious to get it going. Is this kind of unfinished? You think business? you can see if you can find me a cough drop from the <coughs> TV or something? <coughs> kind of unfinished business for you guys given how close you were to beating them last season and kind of looking at that going into this game obviously it's a new mm. season but yeah I think you hit it on the head in the sense that it is a new season and uh, this is this is two different football teams now um, you know they um, they they've they've played extremely well against Wofford and, and Buffalo and, and obviously had the off week this last week to prepare for us a little bit more as I've mentioned before, we want to have some differential advantage, and so consequently, we tend to be a little bit outside the box in what we do. And obviously, they'll be a little bit more prepared for that. I think we're a little bit more difficult to prepare for uh, in just a one-week time frame because of the uniqueness of some of the things we do. Um, 
We're excited about it. Uh, you know, obviously, the last game that we played with them was an exciting game, and um, I really have got you know uh, strong feelings in relation to the job that Art Browse has done at Baylor. Uh, their schemes are outside the box, also in terms of what they do, and so they're difficult to prepare for. And as I've mentioned before, I think you're always more appreciative of those coaches that. Um, tend to not just try to hurt you with their players, but they hurt you with the scheme that they run. And Art is, does a tremendous job of that in relation to he's got good players and they've got a you know a significant scheme. So thank you. <laughs> you even opened it for me. <laughs> That's big time. I apologize. <laughs> so we, we know that going into this game that we're going to have to play extremely well. Uh, I think our players want to see that happen. Uh, we know that this this is uh, obviously a significant challenge. So, <coughs> okay. You talked about being happy with the win, but disappointed just like the way that you play. I know you're always talking about changing the culture, but in addition to that, and what your players expect out of yourself, what about you know, listening to Art Brown talk yesterday? The perception that you're getting from other universities, and especially a team who you know you're in the top 25 at this point, and what can that say about? Just continuously trying to build something here. Well, uh, you know, um, we're, we're proud of the direction that we've headed. I've said that multiple times. I like the culture that within our football team. Um, I got the question earlier this week from another media source in relation to, um, you know, th- how do you how do you change expectations? Expectations are generally something that is brought through a, a time frame in history to where this is kind of what things happen, how, how they happen. Uh, the fact that um, we've changed some of those is, is a real positive. Now, that doesn't um, – we need to go out and play to our standard of performance. That, that's, I'm more interested in playing at a high level than I'm necessarily about winning and losing. And I know that my, my job and, and these players' opportunities are all based off wins and losses. But the older I get and the longer I'm in this, in this profession, it's more just about how you play. And then how you play kind of takes care of everything else. It generally takes care of the wins and losses. Um, so uh, I appreciate Art's comments. Um, you know, obviously, we would like to emulate the successes that he's had there at Baylor and, and because they've made themselves into a top 25 program from nothing. And he's done a wonderful job with that in a difficult conference. And so obviously, uh, if, you know, if we can grow the program to that point, then that's when you start kind of defining success, I think. And uh, we're not there yet, but but I do like the direction that we're headed. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I have <laughs> okay. Uh, but at the same time, like talking to some of the older guys on your team, and then talk about, you know, maybe their true freshman year, like 09 or something. And when they went on the road, it was like, I mean, they've said, people would ask them, why are you excited? Like, we're just here to collect a paycheck. And now you're going up against teams. And even though they look because it's a home and home, but the guys to, instead of, okay, look, let's just go get this done and come back, you know, and, and to anticipate winning. And then in addition to that, to have, you know, a top 20 team. I mean, I never, when, those, those 09 you know, years, and whenever you want to hear the opposing coach talk, no one even ask about ULM. It's always like, okay, what are you doing this week to kind of prepare for maybe next week? So to be at that point where you're actually not taken lightly in these out-of-conference games. Well, I don't think there's any question that based off last year uh, that they're going to be prepared to, you know, to play us and, and um, probably excited about that opportunity like we are. So... Uh, yeah, you know, it's been – we're on a journey, and, and we've completed a little bit of that journey in terms of kind of gaining some respect. But, um, you know, we don't have full respect. If we did, then, then uh, you know, we, we would be ranked and all those other kinds of things, and that's kind of what my goal is. I think it's the player's goal. And so we've, we've still got a ways to go. And, again, it's kind of part of the process. It's, it, we're on a journey, and we want to make sure that we do all the little things in order to get us to that point. And it's, it is about the details. And that's what I talked with the players about after the ball game. Uh, it wasn't that we didn't play hard because we played hard. Uh, we weren't as detail-oriented as we need to be. 
And I think the the frustrating thing from a coach's perspective, and I think even from a player perspective, is this is a pretty mature team. And generally, well, you might not have all the 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 answers all the time. Generally, mature teams tend to be pretty detailed teams, and we were not as detailed as as what I would have liked for us to have been uh, last Saturday. And so we need to take care of those details. Um, I still don't think, obviously, we've played up to our potential. Now, we changed our preseason format just a little bit. I, I've always kind of felt like the, over the last three years, anyway, I, I thought we peaked a little bit early. And timing that up and, and sustaining it, I think, is, is kind of the key point. You don't want to uh, peak in preseason camp and and then turn around and, and have a lot of injuries or, or wear out during the course of the season. Now, the, the good thing that, that we've done this year, I think, is we're playing a lot of people, and we're playing a lot of people, and we're playing them early in games, and it's given us more experiences. Now, I think it's leading to a little bit of that lack of continuity to some degree in relation to guys being as comfortable out there playing with other people and, and some of the mistakes, but I think it will pay dividends as we continue through the season because, as I mentioned right now, we're as, you know, uh, we're as healthy as we've been all season, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited that we're able to play the number of people that we've been able to play you know, because I think it's led to some of that. Uh, I think uh, we're at a point now offensively where with both quarterbacks, I think, feeling much, much better. Uh, we got into our offense here this last week for really kind of the first time uh, since the start the first quarter of Oklahoma. I think our players are excited about that, you know, and kind of getting back to kind of who we are. And... Um, With you know, we, there's a potential to get Centarius Donald back this week, and I, which I think is going to happen. And so again, we're as healthy as, as you know we've been since preseason camp started. Mm -hmm. Is he probably <coughs> questionable? What would you? How would you kind of grade where he's at right now? Centarius? Yeah. Oh, I'd say he's probable. Now, uh, he's not obviously in any kind of game shape, and and that's something that we'll need to to really monitor during the course of the game. Uh, and it doesn't mean that he's going to start or play significantly because obviously he's got to practice in order to get that done. But uh, we are going to practice him this week uh, with the idea that we think he'll be cleared here on Thursday when he sees his doctor again. How do you think your running game is right now based on what you wanted going into the season and where it is now? I don't really care. I, I care about performance. I don't really care about the yards. Um, you know, I think a lot just kind of depends on – and I, I think – Art does a nice job with this. Obviously, they've, they've put up some significant rushing yards and some significant passing yards. I, I want to be able to take advantage of whatever the defense is giving us. And so consequently, I don't, I don't really care about, uh, and I don't, about how many yards we rush for or how many rushing attempts we have or how many passing attempts we have. I'd like to think at the end of the season that you become very balanced because if you hurt somebody with the run, they're going to start defending the run, and that should open up the pass. And then if you come back that next week and, and you throw the ball real well, then uh, people start defending the pass and then you have the run again. And so I, I want to take advantage of whatever the defense gives us. I think that you have to be good at both. Um, I think late in the season last year, we were not good at both. And, and that created some problems because we were having to force the situation and throw the football into defenses that were predicated on on, on stopping the pass. So. I don't really worry so much about individual game stats. I, I look at stats over a four or five game time frame. Then I think they be, there's enough. Of, there's a large enough database to start collecting some real thoughts about kind of where you're at. But one game, I don't really, I don't put a lot of stock in. <laughs> You've been listening to the radio. <laughs> You and Tim right <laughs> But going into this, this might be the last time you face a nationally ranked team for the season, but do you feel like your guys like, want to make another statement like they did last year to maybe put that extra upbeatness into the season and have everybody looking at y'all like it was last year? Well, that's probably a better question for them in relation to, you know, that I want to make a statement every week. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I want to play well every week, and I want to raise the bar every week, and that's kind of the – that's the coach in me, regardless of who who we're playing. Again, I just want to, I want to play up to our expectations. Uh, 
is there uh, obviously a little bit more emphasis whenever you start playing against a top 25 team? I'd be lying or naive to think that there's not in relation to the players. Naturally, we want to get to that point to where it doesn't make any difference, but I know that with the, with what happened last year, and and as you mentioned, probably the last team time will play a ranked team this year, then there there is this unique opportunity. And so I'm not naive enough to not understand that the players are going to be hearing this from a lot of different people, and so it's going to cross their mind. I hope that we just go out and play to our capabilities. Given that you said you guys haven't played to your potential, is it still encouraging that you found ways to win games and you still feel like you haven't played your best ball game? Yeah, I, I think there's no question that I, I agree that, that uh, uh, you know, we, we still have an awful lot left to give, and and I'm excited about that. Um, but I'd like to see it this week. I, I don't want to wait any longer, uh, and that way we can, you know, continue to grow. But the fact that we won and didn't play well, again, against an ACC opponent, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's probably saying something. It's not that... Don't get me wrong. I think Jim Grove, as I mentioned, is a tremendous coach and has done a great job with that with that Wake Forest program, and they've got some really fine players. I think um, uh, my frustration and, and and they made some plays, and good players are going to make plays, and they made some. But uh, my my frustration is a little bit more in the details, and I think that's where the details can help us become a better team. <coughs> Like Colton from you know last year or something. Do you get that question a lot, and do you feel like it's really not something to be worried about because like you sure. said last week, like the best is yet to come? No, I, I think that I think every player and every coach kind of goes through this little time frame. Whenever we we kind of know what the answers are, sometimes the answers aren't always there. And you know, uh, Colton is a fast, explosive player. But when you have an injury, you're not going to be a fast, explosive player. And so don't think that you're going to be. And, and then you have to play within the realm of where you're at. Um, you know, last year, whenever we, we were starting to struggle a little bit on defense, I knew what the problems were. The problems were the injuries that kind of took away some of our leaders and some of the guys that, made, that, that communicated. And uh, so I, I – but there is no easy fix there because you're not going to get them back. And so you just kind of move on. And so – you know, for some of the pundits, then you, you just have to kind of take it in stride, understanding that they really, uh, while we understand our, what our problems are, and every team has problems, every team has problems, how well you can mask those or how well you can overcome those is all kind of dependent upon what you have that you've got to work with still. And, um, you know, obviously I, I think Colton has been hampered to some degree um, by the injury. But I think also you'd see in the first half, there were some things that were pretty Colton esque. Is that a word? Yes. Can we can we can I, I can I, I coin that? I think Colton coined it last year. Oh, did he Colton esque something? Uh, you know, where he made some moves and he, all of a sudden he was moving around in the pocket. You know, because he's feeling better. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, obviously there was a tremendous amount of pressure on him in his last ball game because of the nature of what Wake Forest was doing. And in the process, you know, that's how you, I guess you get to be the conference part of the week, right? Is that, that there was an awful lot going on. Now, I think he'd still like to feel a, a little bit more comfortable. And I think that's coming in time. And I, I think he feels better now than what he did last week, and which was better than the, he felt the week before. So I think we can see more of that, along with, as I mentioned before, with Braley's injury. There were some real strong limitations on kind of what you wanted to do with Colton or what you could do with Brayley, and that obviously impacted the whole game plan as a whole because everything goes through a quarterback. So to answer your question, once again, in relation to the pundits, you know, we have to kind of ignore those kind of things because the reality of it is they don't know. We do, and so we need to trust our judgment because we're, we're the ones in the know and, and not them. Coach, you uh, took the field last week, though. No names on the back. Was that a, your decision, or was it a? I'm so glad that you asked that. I know, right? It's a sky's ball. Because, well, yeah, I mean, because all of a sudden it's now, you're not playing well, and so I've taken the name tags off. Or the players voted. 
and said, let's take the nameplates off of our back. I've heard all the stories. Here's the real story. Uh, ourselves, Texas A&M, Mississippi State, everybody that wears maroon, we all have Adidas jerseys. And all of our white jerseys, for whatever reason, the maroon twill, whenever we washed them, all of us, it bled. It wasn't anything that, that our equipment people did wrong. Uh, in the process, Adidas sent us some cleaning agents that were supposed to get the pink out of our white uniforms. Uh, that didn't work. <laughs> and so at Adidas's expense, good for them because they're answering the bell on this because they, they had the mistake. Obviously, they sent us new jerseys this last week. Now, well, there obviously wasn't time to be able to put the name plates on. Plus, they're not the ones that are t the twill. They, these were basically a screen print. I don't know if anybody noticed that uh, as, as they were gauging why we took the, the name type placards off the back of the jerseys. But uh, we're very, very hopeful, uh, understanding that it is trending high, that we are going to have our, our normal way uniforms uh, this next week with the names on the back, in the twill, with the new stuff, and then hopefully this time when we wash them that, they're not, that the maroon is not going to fade off into the white. So th there's no conspiracy. Uh, there's no issues other than um, – a, a, a maroon dye bled onto a jersey, and Adidas can't explain why, but it happened to everybody else's out there. So we're, we're one of, of many, and so hopefully that clears that up because I've certainly been asked that question about a thousand times. See, these are the things that, that we used to not have to deal with as coaches. While it might have been out there, the reality of it was it wasn't going to be widespread because now with social media and uh, Internet and all those other kinds of things, all of a sudden everything is becomes this conspiracy. So no conspiracy here, just uh, uh, a, bad, uh, a bad jersey. I use social media to put it out there, but you know, some people just like to create conspiracies on their own. Absolutely, and then, they're, then, they're, and then obviously if somebody says it, then it's got to be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, there's no other way around it. Is anything changing your defensive preparation given how dynamic Baylor's offense is this season? Well, I, I think that uh, obviously you're going from defending a, a pistol-oriented option offense to this uh, highly unique spread offense. Uh, th theirs is unique in terms of the tempo, and theirs is unique in terms of their wide receiver splits and kind of what they're willing to do. Um, and so th this is a very, very unique offense, and so obviously our – Preparation this week will be much different than it was last week. Whenever we were taking on cut blocks and and making sure that we had dive quarterback and pitch, and and this week it's going to be, you know, obviously a much more spread out game. Now they will run the football if you give them the run, and they're not afraid to do that. So we've got to defend both, just like you do every week. Um, but they're going to try to put more pressure on you with their wide receiver splits and, and then some of their athletes. Can you talk to Eric? <coughs> Mm -hmm. going up against some of those top-notch receivers in the country. But from what you've seen in the first three games this year, um, you know, there's been some big pass breakups and you know, just kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the receivers so far. Do you feel encouraged with the improvement of the secondary going up against Baylor once again? Oh, Baylor's going to test us. They test everybody. I mean, we're not going to be the Lone Ranger here on this thing, okay, because they're going to test everybody. That's the nature of their scheme, and they've proved it over uh, a lot of games that they're going to test everybody. Now, uh, are we, I think, a much more confident secondary? I don't think there's any question about it. And, uh, and most of that has to do with just maturity. Uh, we, we played some things really, really well the other day. Now, we had some breakdowns in zone coverage that were frustrating. Uh, but we played some things really, really well. And, and again, I think we're, we're playing, you know, we're playing four corners, which we've never done in the past. And that's allowing guys to be a little, a little bit more fresh, not just during that game. But even as, even as the season wears on, you know, last year we, you know, we went 12 straight, and that was hard. That's hard on a football team. When you go 12 straight like that and you don't maybe have all the depth that you'd like and you have to try to find a way to kind of rally back up and you have all the little bumps and bruises and there's a cumulative effect to that. So um, I, I'm, I'm pleased with our development. And I'm excited to see them continue to grow because this is obviously still not a, a very mature secondary for the most part. This is a relatively young secondary. I know you talked a lot last year about that and to play 12 weeks in a row. 
Have you made sure that that's not going to happen in the seasons forthcoming? No, I, I can't. I don't have any control over that, quite honestly, because you know the conference is going to set the schedule, and then uh, again, as we've you know talked openly, and I don't mind saying it, we need money games, and when you're playing money games, uh, you're going to take the most money, and you're going to play whenever they tell you to play, and so you're kind of at everybody's mercy. It wasn't that um, you know the the uh, we've made a mistake before in scheduling. We, we just we have to play those games. We understand it. I'm not complaining about it at all. Uh, it is what it is, and so we don't have a lot of control over our schedule uh, from because the finances basically dictate it. And you mentioned yesterday on the teleconference about how, from looking at Baylor, <coughs> they're doing things that have improved as well. Mm -hmm. What have you seen that maybe they're doing a little bit better this year? Well, I, I think they're an awful lot more comfortable in kind of what's going on. I think that's evident, and uh, you know they, they've uh, their program's grown. And as, the, as programs tend to grow, uh, so do the athletes that grow in them. And so, you know, their, uh, their recruiting obviously has picked up because of some of the successes they've had. And so you're seeing a much more athletic group also. This may be my favorite <coughs> quote I've heard in a really long time from Art Bryles, but going about the environment he talked about last year, that uh, talking about Monroe, those people shut the town down, shut down every high school game, National TV, da, da, da. they brought the Duck Dynasty boy in. <laughs> no idea of flying it, who he was, flying in a helicopter, and all of a sudden got out, the beard got out. <laughs> what do you anticipate? Because they said, we want to match that so that when they come to our place, we're going to have the same type of hostile environment <coughs> and try to, you know, do what they is – is, we don't need a Duck Dynasty guy. They just want one more point than y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, you know, that um, – I don't think there's any question that regardless of, of kind of – the games that you've been in as a coach. I've been in many. Art's been in many in a lot of different environments. Uh, the game last year in Malone Stadium against Baylor was the way college football is supposed to be. I mean, it was rowdy the whole game. Uh, I think both teams responded to that um, and, and were encouraged by the, how much energy there was in the stadium. That's what we need to create every week here. And... Um, and we recognize, that, you know, as, as a staff, uh, as players, as, as a football team, that it, you know it's our job to kind of create that kind of excitement. Uh, now, obviously, the, uh, Baylor's offense and some of the uh, you know the ridiculous numbers they put up had something to do with it. ESPN's had something to do with it, and we can't duplicate those every week. But in terms of atmosphere, that was as good as it gets last year here. I mean, that's as good as it gets. And Art, obviously. In his comments, is is throwing a lot of praise at the campus, at the university, at, at the the our fan base, at, uh, in Monroe, you know the city of Monroe and West Monroe. So uh, those are those are wonderful things. And and again, now that we've done it, now we need to duplicate it. Just like everybody expects us to go out against Wake Forest and just pound them because now we've we've arrived. You know, uh, all those kind of things are. are I understand it because we kind of expect the same things out of the fan base now in the sense that, okay, we, you know, you showed that you could do it. Let's keep doing it. So to create that every week here, to take the home field advantage away from them, are you going to take Willie with you to Waco? You know, I haven't called Willie. <laughs> I, I, I probably need to see if he won't uh, fly his helicopter in. And I know he still has the beard, so we got that. <laughs> we, we can check that box. So. Yeah. Okay, anything else? All right, great. I apologize for the the coffin. I know there was no tangents or anything, was there? I was just. I'm just trying not to cough, huh? Yes. Oh, thanks. I told you. More? Oh. First up, senior quarterback Colton Browning. Floor's open for questions. As you get ready to break more and more records in, in ULM's history, have you had a chance to kind of go back and, and talk to you know, Stephen Giles, Kinsman, Lancaster, and these guys, and, and what's been the conversation if you talked to them? Uh, no, I haven't got a chance to talk to them yet. Uh, but, you know, with all these record talk stuff going on, uh, you know, all the praise goes to my teammates just for, you know, helping me get to the point that I am with, you know, my receivers, O-line, 
uh, running backs. Everybody's been, you know, a part in me getting to this point. So, you know, I, I'm thankful for them as well. Do you get the question a lot of what's wrong with you? <laughs> because it seems like everything you're supposed to, like, do what you did every week against, like you did against Arkansas. So do you, do you get the question? I mean, I have. I've, got, I've gotten it from, you know, quite a few people. But, you know, like Coach Barry said, I'm feeling a lot better now. Uh, as the weeks have went on, I'm, I'm starting to feel better every week at the beginning of, you know, after a game, it's, it's not been as bad. So it's been really good to actually get myself back to full speed and to make sure that I keep getting the treatment that I need. That way I can get back out there and run around full speed just like I was at the fir- uh, around the first half of Wake Forest, which felt really good to be functional in the offense, you know, at full speed and, and us move the ball like we did, especially on the first first drive, you know, going 17 plays and scoring was, was really good to see. How great was that? Because you feel like you, you know, it's kind of frustrating to be hampered, and then to be able to go out there and do that and set the tone so early. Just what did it feel like? To kind of feel like, okay, like this is this is the old offense we know and love. Yeah, it felt good to get back to you know playing normal again and, and moving the ball like we know we've been capable of all season. Uh, you know, O line did a great job. Running backs did a, did a heck of a job running the ball when we did uh, put the ball on the ground, and receivers did a good job at running routes and catching the ball, and making some plays, but. It also felt good, like I said, to get out there and run around and be able to, you know, break some scrambles or, or get away from pressure and to see, you know, myself be able to perform at 100% instead of being, you know, hampered every single week, which was really killer. Uh, not only cause to hurt the op- offensive production to, you know, maybe limit it some, but for myself as well, not, it kind of hurt my confidence. But finally, now that I'm back, it feels good and we moved the ball really well out there. And it was, it was like I said, really good to see. What does it say just for the state of your offense that Coach Barry says you guys haven't really played your best game, but you're still out there winning games? So what does what does it say about the state of your offense and how you guys feel right now? We haven't, you know, been playing the the game that we've been capable of playing. We've we put up numbers last week, uh, of course, but that's still, you know, we had two turnovers, uh, which are you know bad on my part, and I got to learn to take care of the football better, for, you know, f- for the offense's sake and for the defense as well, keeping them off the field more, giving them some more rest, but. Our offense hasn't had the best game that's been capable of because we've had some drive killing penalties or you know turnovers, and you know we got to stop those things, especially on third down. Whenever we're sitting in third and short, then we back ourselves up to third and long, and it changes the whole entire mentality of the play call for Coach Farmer and you know for Coach Barry and, and the whole offensive game plan. And we can't do that out there. We got to make sure that you know we cut out those little mistakes and that we go out there and execute every play to the best of our ability. And we're on we're clicking on all cylinders, not just you know just a few places here and there. What are you guys going to be thinking when you go on the field against Baylor since their offense is so dynamic? Is it just like, okay, we need to score every possession because of how they score? Or like, what changes in terms of when you take the field? Well, we, we want to score whenever we get the ball, every possession anyway. I mean, that's, that's the plan. That's, that's what our mentality is because we feel like we have the offense that can do that. And, you know, we showed it plenty of times. And this year, you know, we haven't really got the chance to, to prove that we, we haven't necessarily been explosive like we have, you know, all of last year. But, like Coach Barry said last year, or this past game, we, we showed flashes of that, and we're excited to get back out there against Baylor and, and run our offense to be explosive like we know it can. And like I said, our mentality is to get out there and score every position. Baylor has a great offense. Other defense has improved, but on offense, we need to take care of the ball and move the ball as well to help our defense out. Did you feel like you said first quarter in the first half of last week, you felt really good and the offense was doing what they could. Did you start? Because you said you were 100 percent going in. Did you kind of start to feel like it kind of nagging, maybe as the game went on? It, it kind of did. It kind of nagged as the game went on, but you know that's part of playing the game. Uh, your your body wears down over the course of a game, but you got to learn to fight through it and to to make yourself believe that you know you're okay. And and that's what I did. But you know after the game, got the treatment, got whatever I needed, and now I feel a lot better than I did in the second half. But also, but even before the game, so it's exciting to feel that way. And like I said, to be back at 100 percent. Going up against Baylor is a team that, you know, I mean, it's like a fireworks show last year. And, you know, Coach, I asked Coach Barry, this is maybe your one last chance to try to upset a nationally ranked team like you did last year and to kind of drive all that attention that made it really fun last year. Do you all think about that? Like, here's this one shot to get national exposure and doing something similar to last year? Uh, we, you know, we really don't think about all the hype of playing, a, of course, our top 25 teams. That, that's awesome. It's good to play against those kind of – caliber programs and Baylor is a great program but you know we look at it as as it's our next opponent on the list and you know it's Baylor and we want to be at one another this week and we got to go on with the mentality of you know we've got to be able to beat anybody we, we step up against and you know we can't let the the hype of a national the national stuff get in our way we got to go out there and play our game and make sure that uh, we execute and win the game 
if we get that thin opt-in to know you can be, just how perfect timing would it be this week because you're going up against well, what, what is right now the best offense in the nation to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them again like you did last year, just how much more does that like, add into this? Like, let's get back to being the offense we know you can be. It'll be great to get back to that point. You know, we've like I said, we've kind of – not been showing that the first few games of the season and to kind of have flashes of that last week against Wake Forest was good, but, uh, you know, we don't want to wait anymore. We want to get out there and, and show everybody that we're still the offense that we've been all along and to prove, you know, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. And it, Baylor's a great matchup. They have a great offense, like I said, but, you know, I feel like we do too, and I think it'll be a really good game for us to come out and show that and to prove to everybody that we're still the same. Any other questions for Colton? Sacks, force fumble. What was it about this game that really stood out to you that you know you were able to put up those, those big numbers? Uh, just coming into the game, knowing we're, that we're, we are facing an ACC opponent, that we do need to give it our best game. Um, I just felt like it really is time for me to step up and be a playing factor in this defense, show people that I can do something. So I came in and gave them all this game, and I came out to be for the better. Is this a game that the defense anticipates goes to big test since their offense is, is so dynamic? Uh, we're going into this game uh, with a lot more mindset that we'll, we're going to stop these people. Uh, Baylor's a huge team and more of a diverse offense than, and they're more spread out for passing and stuff. So we're going to get after them with just everything we got. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that answers your question. <laughs> Going into last week, I mean, all y'all did was practice the option, triple option, you know, in the run, and then they switched really fast because y'all were pretty much shutting down the run. And so for y'all to adjust as well as y'all did, pretty much holding the 14 points up until that last two minutes of the game, you know, um, does that instill some confidence of that y'all can adjust so quickly and you're going to have all this week to prepare for such a, a dynamic passing game? Yes, it, yes, it does. I mean, it's kind of shows the maturity of our defense and the, and the fact that we can go out there and for one game plan and then in the second quarter come back and play a completely different game plan because came out there and ran the option five or six times and we stopped it. We stopped it almost every time and they just went to a completely different offense that we trained all week. So we, yeah, I mean, it's hard to do that and now that we're going into a passing, a passing majority team, we're just going to go in the same way if they start running the ball. We, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop the run. I mean, even if they do the option, we're just all right. Let's go wait for his plan. You know, <laughs> so. This is probably the most diverse offense you face. I mean, they can run the ball. They have that you know great running back, and then of course they can do just the passing. Just what do you remember from last year? And I guess if y'all started watching film for this week, like is there anything? Okay, I didn't. I think I had yet. But will there be some new wrinkles in there? But how beneficial is it that you're playing at a conference game against a team you just played last year? I mean, just remembering the game last year, it was a huge game, huge opportunity for us. And for us to fall so short after all those games, it's kind of motivation for this year to come back and play them and win this time, you know, just show these people that we can't, that we are going to beat this team. And it, it, what was the first part? <laughs> what was the first part of your question? I was just about how complex the offense is. It's probably like the most pass run, mm -hmm. uh, and running like blend that you've had all season. Um, just it comes back to the maturity of our defense and the fact that we can go out there and we can play all those things. You know, we're not like we're not just a run-stopping defense, and we suffer with the pass, but we can also defend the pass and do the run. So, come, just we can install so much more now than we could last year, and people get the concepts of schemes that we're doing. So it's easier to go out there and stop people like this. Same question for you. <clears throat> With so many guys returning and people expecting y'all to do some big things and make a big splash like y'all did last year, and this being maybe the last time you face a top 25 team, do you do y'all feel like that pressure of we really want to make us you know make another splash like we did last year and, and go toe to toe with a nationally ranked team, or are you kind of like Colton, where it's just the next guy on the list? It's exactly like Colton. I mean, it's just the next guy ranked, unranked, you know, 
first place, last place. We're going to go out there every time and play our defense, play at our speed every time, give it give it everything we got. And just uh, wherever the scoreboard is, as long as we give it 100%, I know we'll come out on top. It doesn't matter who it is.